Okay, so we're just gonna do this completely unedited, uncut. I just wanna make sure everything gets into the video because, well, I don't wanna cut anything during editing that I might have missed or anything that could have been important that could have accidentally got left out. So this is just gonna be completely uncut, uh, one take. But yeah, what's going on guys? How you doing? It's Papa. And what I did was I took Burning Abyss to the YBM free case tournament for Lightning Overdrive. And I gotta say, it has been so long since I finally got to play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in real life. I haven't done any remote duels. I didn't feel comfortable doing them. Just something I, just something that wasn't my cup of tea. But I took Burning Abyss and I felt the most comfortable with it. And I know I've been talking about profile on Burning Abyss for my channel. The only thing that stopped me from doing it was, yeah, sure, I took the break, but also this was the deck I felt more comfortable taking to this tournament. So I have a lot, I don't want to say a lot. I mean, there's a little over 400 of you guys, but I don't have a bunch of subscribers, but I do love the ones that I do have. It's just a matter of like a lot of people from SoCal that do subscribe to, or a lot of people that are subscribed to me are from Southern California. So I didn't want anyone to take what I was going to be playing and or just know what I was going to be playing. So I just decided to leave it until the tournament. But this deck was a whole lot of fun. I did really good. I went X1-2 uh, out of seven rounds of Swiss. And then I got 20th place out of 108 players for my first tournament back. Basically first tournament since playing Yu-Gi-Oh! almost a year and a half ago, I believe. But the deck was great. I think there's only like a few cards that I changed and I'll go over that when I get to them. But a big shout out to my boy Yang, rest in peace. He was there all day with me and a lot of the luck that I had was from him. And I'm just truly thankful. But he was the all-star of the day. Didn't play a single game without him. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the list because I know we're waiting to see it. So start off, three copies of Tour Guide. Uh, shouldn't come as a surprise, this card is great. I think this only got stopped once during the tournament. Other than that, every time I resolve Tour Guide, I won. I think there was just one instance where I didn't. Uh, three copies of Rhino Warrior. This was correct. I was debating on two, but three just was key because I, whenever I saw him, uh, I would either mill him or like if I didn't have Tour Guide, I would draw him and then I would just uh, special the other BA to keep the combo going from there. But uh, these guys are perfect. Maxing out on these are, is definitely the idea you want to do. Uh, three Graph, this card was insane. I think this didn't get stopped at all. And then two Skarm. Skarm was really good too. I kept getting into that instance where like, if I milled it, I would just search uh, Farfa to have a discard for Dragoon. But a lot of the times too is that when I would detach the Dante with Beatrice, I would add the Skarm back. And then if I didn't have to uh, banish any of my opponent's cards with Farfa, then I would just discard the Skarm to get another search at the end phase. And when I would do that, I would just search uh, Torgad to set up for the next turn. But Skarm was really good. And then uh, two copies of Seer. Uh, it's ideal. I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen this in a lot of Burning Abyss lists. Uh, the 3, 2, 2, and then uh, 2 Farfa as well. Farfa was okay. I mean, there was only a few times where I used him, but when I did use him, it was kind of game-changing. So he was really good. And then two Seer was good as well. You don't need three. Uh, Alich, this got sided out a lot. I never really used his effect. I think I used it once. Uh, Libic, again, he was just there for the name. I don't think I really used his effect either. Calcab was insane. Calcab was really good because I played a lot of uh, trap decks. Um, my matches were uh, two Eldritch, uh, uh, two Dragon Link. Oh no, one Dragon Link, two Eldritch. Uh, two dinosaurs, and then Time Thief, and I'm trying to remember what the last one was. It might have been another dinosaur. Oh no, it was a uh, Drytron. Drytron. Uh, but I basically slaughtered the Dragon Link matchup, and then I beat the Drytron. I beat one of the. The only loss I had today was, uh, or today from the tournament, the only loss I had was against Dinosaur. Uh, other than that, I drew against the other Dino player I played. But the guy I lost to, uh, was a, is, he's a friend of mine. Uh, shout out to you, months. But uh, Calcab was really good because it would just uh, it would bounce spell uh, set cards, and it, 
it was really key because when with the Eldritch matchups that I played against, it was just broken. It it was a card that I would open. I opened it like both game one and game two, and I was able to just win because of it. But I don't know. I wouldn't take it out. If anything, I'd probably cut the bar par for another cow cab because I did not use bar bar once. This got sided out every single game. And then uh, honorary burning abyss is backjack. This card was insane. This only got hit by call by the grave I think once, and then. In, when it would, I would just chain the second effect to mill, and then if I hit a trap card, I hit a trap card. If not, then oh well, so be it. But backjack was honestly one of the MVPs all day. This card was crazy. And then dark magician red eyes for dragoon shouldn't come as a surprise. But um, I only drew like these probably once or twice all day. But I never drew them together. If anything, I drew the fusion. Uh, I drew the fusion a couple times and then I activated it like that because it was just the right thing to do because Dragoon with trap cards is game. And it was really good. I think fusion only got stopped once, but for the most part, whenever I resolved fusion, I had the game won. But that's going to do it for the monsters. And then, of course, we played the one Red Eyes fusion. And then three copies of Prosperity. This card was great. I never resolved it for six, I just resolved it for three. I Pot of, Pot of Dual is really good, but it still lets you special summon, so. That's why you played it. Uh, just the four spells. I didn't play Call by the Grave. I was thinking about it, but I just chose not to, and it worked out in the end. Trap cards. Three Solemn Strike. This card is broken. Uh, striking Diviner of the Herald is really good, and being able to stop Dragon Link plays is really good. Uh, MVP of the deck was three copies of Different Dimension Ground. This card single-handedly will stop anyone's turn. Uh, I played against Dragon Link and I literally resolved all three against him and was still able to win. And then it, it literally just shuts down a turn. Doing this against uh, the Drytron player as well, I was able to resolve both of these and then win from there. And uh, he won game two, but game three, or games one and game three, whenever I activated this, it was just over. This card is crazy. I highly recommend people give this a try because this card is just broken. Uh, three copies of Dynamiscus. This card was also really good. Uh, it underperformed a little bit, but for the most part, Dynamiscus was good. I don't think I would take it out ever. Uh, three copies of Torrential Tribute. Uh, broken. This card is always insane because your Dragoon stays on board and then everyone else just goes by. Uh, you know, trap cards go burr. Uh, double Needle Ceiling. This card was actually really good too. I kind of wanted to play three of it because people will play around Torrential by just not summoning another card. So then you'll just set your Torrential or not your torrential, you'll just set your needle ceiling and then just activate it when they go to battle phase. But uh, I kind of wish I played three because this card was really good, but I was still able to set it with Trap Trick. Uh, a card that I kind of underperformed was Fiend Griefing. This card was, it was all right. I mean, maybe if I played a third, it would come up more, but I only played two of it. I didn't really think it was that good to play a three. And I was correct because it, it didn't really do a whole lot for me. Uh, I wouldn't play the deck without it though. Uh, two trap trick. I don't think three is necessary because this is literally any one of these except strike, of course. But I, I just thought the two was fine, and I forgot. I kind of forgot once about the second effect to where you can only activate one other trap card for the rest of the turn. But remember that you can activate one other trap card. It doesn't have to be the card you set off a trap trick, which is something people need to know. And then the last trap I played was Imperial Order. Uh, this was okay. I mean, I only used it, I think, twice, but the first time I used it, I had Imperial Order, Dimension Ground, and Dragoon out, so that was just game. And then the uh, second time I used it, I basically got myself down to like 100 life points, but I was still able to win the game because Order was just insane. But that's going to do it for the main deck. It's 45, tr 45 cards in the main deck. Uh, kind of wanted to play 50, but I didn't have enough testing, so I just went with 45. I think in the main deck I would cut the Imperial Order for another Needle Ceiling just because I don't think it's really that good in the main deck. Uh, maybe if I saw it more it would be different, but uh, i definitely cut Barbar -Bar too. I think I'd cut Barbar -Bar for another Cow Cab if anything, because Barbar -Bar was just not good. I'd probably only play Barbar -Bar if we were going into time, but it never came up. Moving on to the extra deck, it's just your generic extra deck, so we play Ooh, excuse me. We played two copies of Dante. You don't need three. 
I think two is fine. Most of the time I would uh, banish the second one off of uh, Prosperity. Uh, one Fortune Tune, this card's insane. Uh, Downard. Uh, I guess I should probably touch up a little bit more too on these. So the reason for two Dante also is because uh, it's, it's just really good to not have the third one because you would most likely be banishing two of the Dantes off of uh, Prosperity because you only ever really make one. The only time I've ever made two during the tournament was when I was going for a game and I didn't have Prosperity. Um, that was like the only way I was making two. But whenever I had Prosperity, I would just make the one and I'd be fine because I'd still have Fortune Tune after. But these cards are literally just for making Zeus. Uh, I went Fortune Tune once, maybe, the whole tournament but it's still good, I wouldn't play without it. Uh, Downard was great, it was, I never used the piercing effect, but just having that extra material for a Zeus was good. During my Dragon Link opponent, I uh, went ahead and I attacked with the Fortune Tune, and it, I just slapped the Downard on top, and then hit the Zeus, and he just could not come back, because I, I had a four material Zeus with Torrential Needle Sealing set, I mean, granted, those aren't the best traps to have against with the Zeus, but it was still good, nonetheless. <clears throat> and then I played Beatrice, because Beatrice is good. Uh, this card was great. It's broken. I wish that it was at more. I don't know if I would play more, but I wish it was at more. Uh, one Zeus, insane. I think I made it like two or three times, but I wouldn't play without it, because this card is broken and it wins games. Uh, Link Spider, I made it a couple times. I never made it with Dino Miscus. I made it when uh, my opponent would boss world me and I would get the token. So I would just link away the normal token for the Link Spider and then I would just go into place from there. Uh, Mascarena, I made it twice, I think, but still good. Anaconda, I made it every single game. Uh, Cerberus, I didn't make at all, mainly because the only reason I would make Cerberus was when I would side in Nibiru, and then Cerberus would just pop the token, but I found myself making Dragoon a lot of time anyway, so I would just destroy the token with Dragoon. So, Cerberus, it was okay. It was, it was just a card. It got banished off of Prosperity a lot, so I don't know if I would cut it for anything else. Uh, Unicorn, for Masquerina Unicorn, it's a great interruption. I did that once. Uh, Trisbana, I never made it, but I wouldn't play without it. Access Code, I actually ended up banishing this a lot off of uh, Prosperity as well, because I just never got to that point where I was needing Access Code to go to go for game, because most of the cards I had on board was good. And the main reason too was because by the time I would make Access Code, uh, I'd already be at like just about five summons. Like my opening turn is about five summons, so I don't know. I think I only made Access Code once. But maybe next time it'll be Boral Sword. It really just depends. Uh, Purple Dante, I actually got to summon this a few times, and every time it was out, I won the game. And then lastly, we played Dragoon because this card's broken. So that's the extra deck. Nice 15 card clean extra. And then for the side deck, just gonna wrap it up. Uh, three Nibiru. I, this card is. It's good. I think I only resolved it maybe like twice. I didn't really see a lot of my side deck cards. The one that I did see though was Dimension Shifter, and this card steals games. Basically turning off the graveyard is amazing against any deck that you go up against. And I had a bunch of people ask me why I played Shifter. I mean, if you've seen Gabriel's list, then you'll understand why, because this card just shuts down your opponent for a turn. And when you do that, you can just go ahead and make Fortune Tune. You don't have to make Dante. Uh, during your turn while Shifter's still alive because you can just make a Zeus and you'll be okay, which is what I did, and I won because of it. Uh, I never sided these in because I never played against Tribrigade. Brigade. There was a lot, but I just never played against any of them. Uh, I was really scared for the matchup, so I just did that. And then Double Twin, I was pretty worried about there being back row decks, but I only played two of them, and Calcab was just better, but I never really resolved Twin. Uh, Feather Duster, never saw it, never drew it, uh, probably wouldn't play without it, but oh well. Uh, Red Reboot, I never saw it, and then Solemn Judgment, I saw maybe one game, but Solemn Judgment's broken, you just play it for when you go first. But yeah guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for the deck. I think going forward I'm going to take out the um, 
Godarlas and the reboot maybe and play Droll. I think there, if there was one card I was missing in the side deck, it was Droll Knockbird. I was just so against playing it. I don't know why. I probably should have played it. If I did, I probably would have won the tournament. If I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But the deck was really good. It did exactly what I wanted it to do, and I had a really good time doing it. Uh, I don't know what else to really say. I had a whole lot of fun uh, getting to talk to Simply Slim or Slim YGO. He, he's gone by many names. Uh, seeing Slim YGO was cool. Uh, fifth rate duelist was there. I didn't get the chance to talk to her, but she's always nice. And then uh, matchups were good. Deck performed it, extremely well. And I'm honestly proud with how I piloted the deck too, because I think I only made like maybe one error, maybe two errors. Everything, every time that I lost a game was just because it was out of my control, or I just didn't see side deck cards. But the deck was beautiful. Again, I'd probably just take rid of, take out the bar bar for another cow cab. But the the deck was just amazing. I had a really fun time being able to play Yu-Gi-Oh again, and expect a lot more in the future. But yeah, guys, until next time, this has been Papa. I'm going to go ahead and I'll catch you all in my next video. Take care, everyone.